is a Shields of Shame exclusive. Exclusive. February 28, 2022. The time now is 11.26 a.m. This interview is in reference to IA-0017-2022. Uh, my name is Sergeant First Class Todd Henson with the Office of Professional Standards. Uh, I'll be the one conducting the interview. Also present from OPS is Corporal Allen Morgan. Uh, and this interview is taking place at DPS headquarters. Um, the DPS employee being interviewed is TFC1 Adrian Haggard. Hargett. Hargett, sorry. Uh, who is currently assigned to the mansion. Correct? Yes, sir. Um, uh, if you will, just uh, sp spell your name for me and say it for voice recognition. A D R I A N H A R G E T T. Adrian Hargett. Badge number? 327. And Adrian, the reason we're here is because uh, it's alleged that you showed up to report for duty on February 24th um, at the mansion, governor's mansion, with suspected alcohol in your breath. That, that's, that's the allegation against you. Um, you are being interviewed as a suspect, not suspect, but the subject of the investigation, okay? Um, in front of you, you have the Garrity warning. Uh, before you read that and sign it, just want to make you aware this interview is being audio and video recorded, okay? You're aware of that, mm -hmm. all right? Um, this is an administrative investigation. It's not criminal, so just to let you know it's, it's not criminal in nature. It's all administrative, uh, so you're required to you, you have no you, you are required to participate by DPS policy. Okay, um, but if you have, have you ever read the Gear Rule? No, sir, I haven't. I've, I've read I've read I've read over this already. Do you understand it? Yes, sir. Do you have any questions about it? No, sir. Uh, if you would sign up in that top line. You want me to date it as well? Sure. And today is 28. And Adrian, how, just a little bit of background here. How long have you been on the DPS? I went to Trooper School. Well, I graduated Trooper School January of 2020. I think I went in May of 2019. So what Trooper School did you go to? 107. And where have y'all been assigned to? I was assigned to Perry, right out of Trooper School. Then I was transferred to Cordell about a month and a half later. And I stayed in Cordell for maybe three, four months, and then I transferred to the Capitol. And I was at the Capitol for maybe a year, year and a half, probably not even that long. Then I got sent to the mansion on like January 10th. When you say you got sent? Well, oh, detached to the mansion. So that's volunteer. Yes, sir. I wanted to go, and they, they finally detached me there because they were a little short on manpower. So walk me through your walk me through the day on February the on last Thursday, February twenty fourth, correct? Yes, sir. Walk me through your day. Uh, like what time you woke up? Walk me through your entire day. I woke up at about ten o'clock. I had a doctor's appointment with the VA. It was virtual. All my appointments with the VA have been virtual. My virtual doctor's appointment was at 11. I guess um, I'm on night shift. I work like 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. or 7 p.m. to 6 a.m. They're either 11 or 12 hour shifts at the mansion. Um, so I basically just lounged around all day. 
just basically I just tried to, my, my doctor's appointment being so early was kind of throwing off my sleeping schedule. So I woke up, did my doctor's appointment at 8, and I mean, basically just lounged around all day before I went to work. Um, I got to work at about 20 minutes early, I think. And the Sergeant Lundy was at the gate. I stopped, he walked up to my to the window of my patrol car, and I always, because I know the guy at the gate usually goes home when that night shift guy gets there. So I asked him, hey, Sergeant, am I relieving you so you can go home, or do you want me to go up there to the office with Johnny Kirk, 978? And we talked for a little while, and he was like, no, you can you can just go on up there to the office. I'm fine. I don't get off till later. He was saying, what, telling me what time the governor was going to be in and this and that. So I, I drove up to the to the mansion, not the front gate of the governor's mansion. And um, that's how I was getting my stuff out of the car. I grabbed my PBT. I think. Oh, I'm not even going to. Oh. I grabbed my PPT, and I, I, I really think that's the main reason behind all this. Because I've just gotten, not really in trouble, but they mentioned about, my state phone hasn't worked in two years. And they just kind of, not really gotten on to me, but they said, hey, your state phone needs to be working. Because I didn't care about that thing. I never use it. So I know that all my department-issued gear needs to be in good working order. Because this is Atlanta. I can run across a drunk at any time. So I grabbed my PBT, played with it a little bit. It was dead. I knew it would be dead because I haven't used it in like two years. I brought it in, put it on the charger. I was talking to my aunt on the phone because I had a funeral the very next day. I had a funeral Friday at 1 p.m. to go to in South Georgia. So I was talking to her on the phone about our funeral arrangements. I was like, hey, Aunt Pam, I still got to work Friday night, so I'll just drive to your house as soon as I get off in the morning. You drive down to the funeral and back, and then... I guess I, when I come back, I'll just go straight back to work. I'll just sleep in the car, driving down and back on the way to the funeral. And uh, while I was on the phone with her, Sergeant Lundy, he walks in and he was like, why you got your PBT? And I just looked at it on the charger and I was like, it's dead. I, I wanted to see if I could fix it or whatever before I told him I had non-working gear or before I went to supply and tried to get another PBT or whatever. He said, have you been drinking? And I was on the phone with my aunt. I had my AirPod in. I was like, no. And he said, okay, and he just walked off. I stayed on the phone with my aunt, and um, Sergeant Lundy came back in. We, he, he was kind of acting erratic to me, so I'm like, I, I just went and talked to him. I was like, hey, Sarge, you know, I was talking on the phone. I was on the phone with my aunt earlier about the funeral or whatever that I have tomorrow. And he's like, oh, what happened? I said, my cousin committed suicide the day before Valentine's Day. So his funeral was February 25th at 1. And I was telling him, I had two military, he was in the Marines also, I noticed the pin on this, on this uniform. And I was telling him I had two military members that also committed suicide. And we were just kind of talking about that, and he was like, oh, okay. And I said, well, I'm going to go make a round around the Capitol, around, not the Capitol, the mansion. We have to make rounds every hour or so. So I made a round, while I'm making my round, Johnny Kirk, who just gotten off, was walking back into work. And I was like, he's like, man, what the hell's going on? They're calling me back into work. And I was like... Oh my God, I know he's not about this. Because I knew he just asked me if I'd been drinking. I said, I know he's not about to ask me or say something to me about this alcohol. And Sergeant Lundy, he popped up not even 10, 20 seconds later and was like, put your drink down, we need to go talk. So I, I had a ginger ale. I put my ginger ale down, walked up the hill at the governor's mansion, and I guess the Nighthawks guy, uh, I think his badge was 109. I, I really don't know his name, he wouldn't tell me. I think his name's Sergeant SFC Gas. But um, he was up there. And I was just, I'm like, okay. I'm like, what was this about? And he was like, oh, Sergeant Lundy was like, I smell alcohol on you and this and that. And I was just like, no, no, you don't. Then Sergeant Gass was like, well, your sergeant smells it on you and I smell it on you from here. And at this point, I'm like, I haven't even got within three feet of this dude. And he's saying that he smells alcohol on me. And I'm like, I don't know what you smell. I brought my aftershave stuff and I brought my cologne today because that's more than likely what they smell but he said that he smelled alcohol on me he wanted to feel sobriety on me I said okay and he walked up there he started asking me the medical questions and also brought my prescriptions because I, I am technically medically disqualified from uh, feel sobriety I'm a veteran I've had concussions I've had two eye surgeries I do have prescription medication I got in a car accident with DPS on duty last year in Friday August 13th actually and I have some bad disc in my back. I've been going to physical therapy. I'm getting steroid injections in my neck, all that stuff. So I wasn't, I wasn't going to do field sobriety because I feel like if 
my balance, my balance is off. I get numbness, tingling, all that stuff. I'm like, I'm not about to let them manufacture clues for me to, for whatever agenda they had for them to say that I was under the influence. Because I, I hadn't been drinking. I, did, I, really, I really, and I told someone money, I said, this is a slap in the face for you to say this. Because I literally shake the governor's hand every day. Why would I do that drunk with alcohol on breath? Why would I come to work drunk? It, it just makes no sense to me. I have a kid on the way. I'm, I'm not doing that. I, I need my job. And um, so, didn't do field sobriety. They had me go inside the, the um, so at this point we're away from the governor's mansion. They had me go inside the, I think it was like the GBA building. It's like the GBA building where they do all their stuff, the Georgia Building Authority. They had me go inside there and he brought me the paper saying, submit to a drug test, you're fired, or whatever. I said, okay. Signed it. And I said, hey, Sarge, I'm still going to be able to pee when I get there, but i got to use the bathroom right now. I had to do number two. So he said, yeah, just drop your gun belt before you go in the bathroom. I dropped my gun belt, went, used the restroom, came back out, my gun belt was gone. And um, I guess that's when I started realizing, like, this is a little bit, nah, it, it, everything just escalated so quickly to me. I was like, this is, it, it was just odd to me. I was getting anxiety, everything else. And, um, he drove me to the, well, he got my ID from me and some other stuff, some other information, and he drove me down to the, I think it's named Caduceus or something like that, to the drug testing place downtown, and I was I was holding my pee at this point because I know that that paper said that if I refused to give a sample or if I delayed it, that it would be on me. So I asked the lady, I said, hey, ma'am, I, I got to use the bathroom again. I was like, I'll just have to pound water or something, but I got to pee right now. So if y'all aren't ready for me to get a sample, she said, oh, no, we want breath, so you can go pee. So she gave me this code to go to the restroom. I went to the restroom, came back out. Then Sergeant Lundy was like, hey, what's that code to the restroom? And I told him, he just jumped up and ran straight in there. And he didn't stay in there long either. He just came straight back out. So I don't know if he was trying to check and see if I did something or what. But um, I gave my sample, came back out. He asked them for the paperwork. They told him that it had to be requested officially, I guess. So he drove me back to, he was trying to drive me back home, but I was like, I still got stuff in my patrol car. So he drove me back to the mansion. I cleaned out my patrol car. And I guess while I'm cleaning out my patrol car, he was like, I guess kind of telling me to get all of my stuff out. I really didn't know what that was about, but I basically cleaned out, cleaned it out like it. they'd just given me my patrol car. I got all of my stuff out. And um, he drove me home, and when he got to my house, he, after I got all my stuff out of his car, he shook my hand and he said, maybe I'll see you around someday, and he just drove off. Okay. So, and that was the place you can administrate leave, correct? Yes, sir. I didn't sign the papers till the next night, till Friday night when I got back from the funeral. Yeah, I was in, in Valdosta. Okay. Um, so you say you got up at 10 a.m. and you had a virtual doctor appointment at 11. And then yes, you sir. just lounged around the rest of the day. That's yes, lounged around or tried to lay in bed. Or, didn't go anywhere? Didn't go meet anybody? No, sir. Use your debit card? No, sir. You sure? Yes, sir. I don't. I don't think I went anywhere from it. Um, so you didn't go to a bar and grill? Frisco? Remember I said you need to be honest? Yes, sir. I did. So, so why are you doing that? I just... That. Listen to me. You need to be truthful. Everything, yes, I, sir. everything I ask you can be polygraphed. And if I have the least little bit of inkling that you lie or not being truthful, I'm going to polygraph you. Okay? Understand that I've done a lot of research. I've watched video. I know exactly where you've been that day. You went on four dates with four different women. Did you not? Not four. It was two. Two. Well, okay. But I got video footage of you at Frisco. I got video footage of what you drank. So I need you to be honest with me, okay? If you sit in here and you lie, your career in law enforcement is over because then you'll be branded as a Brady cop, okay? So don't, if you made a mistake, admit it. Don't yes, end your career by sitting here lying, all right? And I'm telling, I'm telling you up front, you ain't being truthful, okay? I need you to be truthful. 
don't make me put you on a polygraph instrument because you will fail it. If I if I were to take your statement, what you told me today, and take you to the polygraph suite and polygraph you, you would not pass. Correct? Yes, sir. Correct. So let's start over. Be very honest with me. Okay? So start over. Start from your day on February 24, what you did, where you went, what you drank, all that stuff. I met up with. You, you ain't got to tell me who you don't. I don't need their names or nothing like oh. that. But where you went, because you didn't land around all day. You, you left your house, you used your debit card. Yes, sir. So go ahead. I went and had brunch at where? I think it was called Toast on Linux. Okay. I went and had brunch, and immediately after brunch there, that's when I went to Del Frisco's. So what time, what time did you go there? Had to work at 7, I want to say it was about 5. The brunch, that, that's where you went? So five, it was about 5 p.m., yes, sir. Okay. And what time did you go? What you, what you eat? What you drink? Uh, she was late, and she was pushing into my time for, for me to go to work, so... I know she had one drink, and I'd ordered a drink. What would you order? It was a... Supposed to be a grapefruit martini, but he gave me a grapefruit margarita. Okay, how big was it? It was regular size, it was small. It was, I don't know what regular size is. It was, I mean, it was, uh, not even six ounces, maybe, I don't okay. know. And I didn't drink it, it wasn't what I ordered, and I told him that, then he gave me another drink. He said, oh, I thought it was a grapefruit. Um, Margarita, and I said no. It was supposed to be a martini. So he brought you a martini. He brought me one, and it was nasty also. So you drank it. I did finish it, but I, I didn't. It wasn't. I, I did drink it. Yes. Okay. And what time was this? Like five o'clock. Okay. Go on. And I mean, I left there, and I got dressed, and I went to work. No, no. So did you, what you got, the drink, was it at Frisco's or was it? It was at Frisco's. What about brunch? What'd you get there? I got catfish, greens, yams, and I'm trying to think. What alcohol did you get there? Um, I'm trying to think. I um, really can't remember. I, I really honestly can't. Um, it was one. It was one drink. I was just being social with her. Um, it was alcohol, there, right? Yes, sir. All right. And what time did you get? What time did you get that place? Probably two hours, probably like three o'clock. No, no, no. So you got there at three? Yes, sir. Around three, roughly. All right. And then you went to Frisco. So what you're telling me is you had two alcoholic beverages, is what you're telling me. Yes, sir. Before you came to work. Yes, sir. All right. So now you go home, you get dressed. Did you check yourself on your PBT? No, sir. Why not? I knew I wasn't under the influence. Two two drinks, several hours before going to work, I, I knew there was there was nothing. What time did you leave for this case? Probably about five forty five. So you're there approximately forty five minutes. So being there forty five minutes you only had one drink? Yes, sir. She she was late, so I was rushing basically I still had to be at work on time. Okay. So it wouldn't Two to three drinks? No. You saying? There was, well, there was one drink at each place. So you saying you only had two drinks? Yes, sir. Okay. Roughly about an hour before you were supposed to come to work. I mean, I, I wouldn't necessarily say that. I mean, I finished that drink early on. With, well, 
I guess I don't quite remember what time I was there, but I'm trying to figure out the best way to word this. Um, it was over an hour before I was supposed to be at work. Okay. Because I mean, I, I drank it. We sat there. We talked, and I was like, "Hey, I I gotta go." All right. So you get you. What time do you leave your house to come to work or your residence? Probably six. 20. So yeah, I had to let Frisco's way before 5.45 because it takes me a good, I'm, I'm not far from work, but with traffic it does take me a while to get to work over about 20 minutes. So I definitely let Frisco's probably about 5.30, 5.15, somewhere around there. So what reason would you need your PBT at the mansion? It was dead. I was just trying to charge it. I mean, what, what reason? Are you going to log up a drunk at the mansion? I just rolled up on a wreck on the way there. I mean, this is, I, I, I was just trying to make sure my gear was How often have you charged? If it, you, you said it, it hadn't worked in two years. It hasn't, but they just got known to me about my state cell phone for not being working, so I was trying to make sure all my stuff was working. So, so you, you hadn't cared about your PVT for two years, and then all of a sudden on February 24th, you need to start worrying about your PVT. It sounds bad and it looks bad, yes sir. I mean, if, if I was going to blow myself, I would have done it before I came to work. I would not come to work and try to blow myself on my PBT. I would call out sick if I thought I was drunk. So I got, I've talked to quite a few people, and I, I've had quite a few people say that the other alcohol in your breath was pretty strong when you got there. It could not have been. How? Because I had two drinks hours before coming to work. It could not have been. The, the way they were making it seem like is, I was drinking when I got there. Like they, they were saying they could smell it from three feet away. I'm like, that's impossible. So, but you had it, but Logan Gas asked you how much you, when's the last time you had something to drink? And you asked, you told him it'd been about a week, which was a, a lie too, correct? I honestly don't recall that, but it's on video. I you said. If, if I said it, then you're When's the last time you had any alcohol? It's been a while. Okay, about how long? Last week. So you lied to another NCO that was asking you a question? Yes, sir. Why? I was scared. Why don't I just tell the truth? Honesty is the best policy, right? But because I know that with the way they were saying I reeked of alcohol, I knew that it was not alcohol that they were smelling. Because it was impossible, sir. What they my cologne or something. My mouthwash, my cologne or something. But they're saying I smell you from here. And I'm like, y'all don't smell them, them drinks from several hours ago. Y'all don't. But you denied the fact that you ever drank that day to everybody to ask you that day. Yes, sir, I did. So what, what does the policy say that when you're asked questions by a supervisor, what does it say? It says to be truthful. And, and you wasn't? No, sir. I'm scared. They, they were accusing me of being flat out drunk at work and, and I knew they that accused you well, they, they said that I was and I knew that I wasn't. I'm like there's no possible way that y'all are saying that I'm you smell me from three feet away when those drinks were three, four, th four thirty five o'clock I, I, knew, I knew it wasn't I knew it wasn't possible. So why not if you knew that the, let's face it, you knew you had had drinks for coming to work, that's why you do feel sobriety. That's not the reason why. The reason why was because all the other other stuff that I told you. What you didn't feel like you why why not just uh I have medical issues that will make me lose my balance or anything else. And then I knew that they so would you just, not do HGN sitting down? I can. So take the take the physical aspect out of it. You you can do HDN sitting down. Why not do it? I have had two eye surgeries. I didn't know. Well, I guess concussions and eye surgeries. I, I don't. I don't know. I really just. The, the what I'm trying to figure out is you're saying that I could have done more. Why, why didn't you cooperate? I understand the fact that medically, I, I got that. I, I understand that. But HGN. I mean, I, I've been in law enforcement for 20 years. He's been in it 23 years. We've done HGN. I don't know how many times on the side of the road or on, on people and they said, hey, I have trouble standing up or well, have a seat, is what I'm saying. Why not? Why, why refuse? Is where I'm getting at. That's where I'm confused at. 
A walk and turn and one link stand, I, I'm, I'm, I perfectly understand that. But the HDN, I don't. If you had nothing to hide. I didn't have anything to hide, I felt like. But I just felt like, I felt like I was being cornered. And I, I just, my anxiety was getting the best of me. I was getting a headache. I just, I was scared. And I, I was just, I have, I have medical issues. I was just like, I'm, I'm just not doing it. All right. But we all can admit the fact that earlier on in in the interview, you were not truthful. I had to pretty much put you on the spot. Yes, sir. So we can all admit, or you can understand or admit to the fact that you did lie in this interview. Correct? Yes, sir. Um, but I, I still think I still think there was more drinks before you got to work. No, sir. It was just two. With the last one being around. 5.30, roughly. I'm that, that, that's to... when the date ended. I say the last one was about 5 o'clock, yes, sir. 5 o'clock. You're supposed to be at work at 7. Yes, sir. So, and a martini, and you don't recall what the other drink is, which I don't I don't believe that, but. It was a, it was a pomegranate martini at um, toast. It was a pomegranate martini at toast, and then it was supposed to be a grapefruit martini at um, Del Frisco's. They brought you a margarita. Though, they brought me a margarita. How much I, of that did you drink? Not that much. I told him it was nasty and he's like, oh, it was a uh, such and such. And I was like, no, that's not what I asked for. And he's like, oh, I'm sorry. And he took it, he, he dumped it out and then he made me another one. So I, you started on, that would have been the start of the drink. I, 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 I sipped it. I wouldn't say that I drank the drink. I sipped it and I sat there and I was like, this is nasty. I did not, I did not drink that drink. So, go ahead, I'm sorry. Not good. So is it fair to say that everybody in the mansion, whether it was Sergeant Lundy, Kurt, Sergeant Gas, they were correct when they smelled alcohol on you? Hours and hours later, I just, I just don't... I understand you denied it. I understand the time frame. But looking back on it now, is it fair to say that they righteously and truly smelled alcohol, alcoholic beverage on your breath? I still don't think so. So where would they have made that assumption from? Where, I, where I, st I still think that it was my cologne. I've got it with me, or my aftershave. It's very, very strong. But the alcohol. And this was the first time that you've ever worn that aftershave or that cologne on that night. The cologne, yes, but not the aftershave. Does it, does it smell like alcohol? It does. Do you want to smell it? No. I already know what alcohol smells like. So where are they making this assumption from? I don't know. And this was the first night you'd ever worn cologne? Yes, sir. And nobody recalls you wearing cologne? I sprayed the cologne because I was going out on those dates. And nobody could smell it? What do you mean? My dates could smell it? Well, everybody at work. Nobody could smell it. But I mean, I'm guessing they smelled it because that's what they were confusing with the smell of alcohol. Mm -hmm. But I don't usually wear cologne to work. So is it fair to say, I'm not saying you were under the influence, is it fair to say that you had alcohol in your system when you showed up to work that night? No, sir. Is I don't not, think so. Not at all? You think so or you know so? Th no, I did not. So you know for a fact that there was absolutely no alcohol in your system when you showed up for work that night? Yes, sir. Even though you'd been drinking previously in the day? Yes, sir. How do you know that? Because of the time frame that I had one drink plus one more drink than when I went to work. I know that, that there was so nothing just, in my system. What do you mean by time frame? What do you mean by that? One martini at 3 o'clock is gone. One martini at 4.35 o'clock is gone. How? How does your body get rid of alcohol? Metabolism, sweat, I, I, I don't know, but I know it is what 0 0.015 per hour. Okay. So, and the drinks you got were liquor drinks, right? Yes, sir. One shot in each drink. Is it free pour or they do shots? Shots. They, Atlanta pours because they don't want to, I guess, cheat themselves out of alcohol or the bottle. But they, they pour, they, it's not free pour. 
Did you check yourself on the PBT at all? I tried to blow in it to see if it worked, but it didn't work because it was dead. So you tried to check yourself? I, I just tried to blow in it to see if it worked. I didn't try to check myself. How did you do that? At the mansion. You didn't check yourself when you came to work? No, sir. But why after two years of it not working that all of a sudden you need to make sure it works? I don't, I don't get I that. mean, I just noticed the thing in my car. I was like, played with it, click, click. It came on. It had, it still had a battery meter on it. And I was like, oh, this thing still has a charge. And the moment I tried to blow it in, it just cut off. I was like, oh, and I brought it in to charge it up. So 24 months prior to that, you didn't care about, about that thing being charged I've, up? I've turned it on and checked it prior to that, and it had worked. And so not 24 months. I. You told me two years it hadn't been working. That's when I used it. No, no, the, my phone hasn't worked in two years. Okay. But the PBT, up until then, I'd always thought that it worked. You checked yourself on that PBT? No, sir. You did? You sure? Yes, sir. You passed by that one? Yes, sir. How certain? 100% certain. So, did gas offer you a PBT? I mean, after I refused field sobriety, they just, they went back to behind the car and they talked while I just stood there in front of the car. And then after that, they just offered me the state drug test. Okay. So he never asked me to blow. I don't, I don't call him ever asking me to blow. So let's talk about yours and Kurt's conversation. When you first got there, what did y'all talk about? Women. We, we usually always talk about women. How close were you to we were close. I was showing them my phone. I showed them the, the well, one of the chicks that I went out on the date with. Do you admit anything to him about drinking? No. You sure? Yes, sir. Why don't he tell me that you said, you told him you'd had two or three drinks prior to coming to work? I, 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 I told Kirk, I said I went out, but I did not say I had drinks. Why don't he tell me that? Probably because that's what he relates to going out as meaning. But no, I, all I said was, what he said. He was pretty specific. But, he was pretty specific. Why did you send him a text message asking what time uh, Sergeant Lundy got off? Because I was trying to figure out what about the governor, what time he, what time he got off. Because the schedule changes every day. Well, it's different every day. Was you gonna be there by yourself overnight? I always am by myself. After about ten o'clock, ten or eleven o'clock at night, I'm by myself. And the uh, guard shack or the security? inside the mansion. In, in the security office. Yes, sir. Because when the guy gets in the gates were closed. Yes, sir. After the governor gets in, we close the gates. So, but why were you concerned about it that night? I usually always ask who's there and what time they. Eat. Sometimes I call them, say, "Hey, who's at the gate? What time they, is the governor here? Is the governor out of town?" I always ask that stuff to try to figure out what the night is going to be like. And then Johnny Kirk was like, "Oh yeah, once." The governor, I think he's leaving tomorrow. He won't be back for the rest of the weekend, so you don't have to worry about anything for the weekend, that type of stuff. So we'll know what the situation is at the mansion. Because if the governor's not there, there's really nothing to worry about. We don't have to go upstairs or really check on anything. There, there's a, it's a lot different depending on who's there and if the governor's there and that type of thing. That, it, everything really points to me as... it. it so... They, you, you say that they, they smelled your cologne, which smells like alcohol. Yeah. When in fact you had been drinking that day, so they were correct in their assumption that you had been drinking, just for the wrong reason. Yes, sir. It makes no sense to me why you take your PBT out, charging it because you're gonna. I mean, when was the last time you locked up a drunk? Last year. What's the number one sign? Somebody's been drinking alcohol. Eyes, bloodshot, watery. What's what's the most common, the most obvious sign that somebody's consumed alcohol? I would say eyes, bloodshot, watery. What's even more obvious than that? Well, the, the smell of alcohol is a really, really high sure. drunk. Like they have to be really, really drunk for you. Don't say anything about being drunk. Okay. Consuming alcohol. What's the number one indicator? What's the, the most obvious one? I would say it's eyes, bloodshot, worry. You wouldn't say you could smell alcohol. You wouldn't say that would be the number one. No, sir. Why is that? Because you can't always smell alcohol. 
it's very, very hard to smell vodka. For Even you? Are you saying for you? Or are you saying for everybody? We've been taught that in, in trooper school. It's hard to smell vodka. It's hard to smell different drinks versus other drinks. Beer, I can smell that from a mile away. It stinks. But vodka, I don't, I don't think so. Which is what they drink for. They're vodka drinkers. Right? Right. That's what I drink. I don't drink beer. I don't drink anything else. So, because you had vodka, nobody could smell it. That's not what I'm saying, but I think that you'd have to drink a lot of it before someone could smell two drinks that far that you'd consumed that long ago on you. I don't, I don't, think, I don't think anybody was alleging you was under the influence. What they're alleging is you had alcohol in your breath, which makes perf perfectly good sense because you drank two, two and a half vodka drinks before you got to work. Two hours before you got to work. And the fact of I'm gonna be honest with you. If I get your PBT out, is mind-boggling to me. That makes it look bad, yes, sir. Now, I'd say what makes it look bad. It makes it mind-boggling. You ain't pulled it out. You've never pulled. I mean, you've never ever charged it to maintenance. So why on that night that you had been drinking that you decided oh, well, I'm gonna charge this thing? I, I don't. I don't. That's not registering with me. It's just wrong place at the wrong time. It's just a bad. No, no, no wrong place at the wrong it's, time. You check yourself. If I were going to check now, myself, let's don't play I'd do if. it at home. Let's don't play if. I'm not. Let's get to the bottom of yes, it. Sir. Let's clarify the issue. You blew yourself on the PBT. Remember what I said? If I, if I have any ink in yes, your mind, I'm going to polygraph you. That's a polygraphable question. Did, yes, you, did you check yourself? I blew into my PBT to see if it worked. It died when I blew into it. Because it said it had a battery and it didn't have a battery. So That's when, when did you check yourself? At the mansion. As soon as I got in there, as soon as I, after I left from talking to Sergeant Lundy at the front gate, I drove over there. I noticed the thing sitting there, dusty and dirty, and I pulled it out, pushed it, said it had a battery. I'm like, this thing still works. But it, you, it, said, it said blow, I blew, and it just clicked off. But, but you, you hadn't had any dire need to see if it worked months and months and months up. Periodically I do check it to see if it works. How? Turning it on and blowing into it. How long? Or turning it on to every two, three, four months. When's the last time you used it on a suspect the mass that? It was I want to say about January or February of last year. So almost 12 months ago. Yes, sir. I'm going to be honest, I don't believe you. I understand. I'm going to be honest with you. Yes, sir, I understand. We, we're troopers in here. I'm just being honest. Yes, sir. I don't want you to get hemmed up, all right, from whether you blew in the, whether, whether you blew in the box or not, I don't want you to get hemmed up on that, and that not only in your career as a trooper, but in your career in law enforcement in general, Anywhere in the United States, it just don't. It just doesn't affect your career as a DPS employee. It will affect your career amongst anywhere in the United States because you'd be listed as a Brady cop. Yes, sir. Okay. You you blew in that box, to PBT, to see if you would register alcohol. It was it wasn't the check if, if the batteries did. I, that that's to me that that's a good explanation to, for you to try to rationalize it, but. That ain't why you blew in the box. I'm just being honest with you. You blew in the box to check yourself. Yes, sir. And there's no way in the world, I've polygraphed thousands of people. There's no way in the world if I were to ask you that question on polygraph, you'd pass that. There's no way. Because all of the facts leading up to this, okay, point to why you had that PBT out. Everybody I've talked to at the mansion has said there's no rhyme or reason to have that PBT out. I even asked somebody, I said, when would you ever use a PBT? They said, never. Okay? Yes, sir. Don't get hemmed up on that. Because I'm going to give you every opportunity to be honest on why, why you had your PBT out. And and when this is done, I got to go have a, I got to have a meeting with... Uh, the, the, the command staff about and they go ask me if I thought you've been if I think any you, there's any inkling that you're not being truthful 
That's why I want to give you every opportunity. Okay? So I'm going to ask you again, why did you have your PBT app? You, you, you've, you, you've called me in a lot earlier about... I called you in several. Yes, sir. I just want to call yes, you in several. And I, I came clean about everything that there is to come clean about. But I did not bring my PBT into work to blow myself. I didn't. I would have called out sick. I would have blew myself at home, but I would not do that. How often do you go out and have drinks before you come to work, like this short period of time? I don't. This is just a one-time thing? Yes, sir. But it'd be safe to say that the two to three drinks that you did have, that there would be still alcohol in your breath when you, when you got to work. I would. No, I, I don't believe so. That, that's why I, I, that's why I was so shocked and in, in awe at everyone saying you smell like alcohol, you smell like alcohol, you smell like alcohol. I'm like, I don't. It, it's, there's no way. But why? Okay, but why didn't you? Yes, I, I had been drinking. Yes. Why did you deny drinks. that? Why did you deny that when you were asked by? Because I knew that that I just knew that it just did not add up for everyone to be saying I reeked of alcohol. I'm like, no, I don't. Y'all don't smell that 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 those drinks from hours and hours ago. I'm like, you don't. You, there's no way. And yeah, for them to be saying, I smell it, I smell, I smell it from here. Like, they did. I just don't, I just don't see how. Or I don't but they it. did. Everybody that you had contact with that night, every, or that, that afternoon or evening, has said that they smelled it on you. Everybody. So, I don't, I mean, why would everybody I've talked to, why would they lie? What, 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 have, what have they got to lose? Right? You're right. So I, I still believe that they smell cologne or something else, but I, I, it was not alcohol. It was not. What cologne out there smells like alcohol? I brought it with me. No, I'm, I'm asking. What it, it has alcohol in it. It's very fruity and it's very, very strong, but they, they did not smell my breath. They did not smell alcohol on my breath. They not, what alcoholic beverage should they say I smell like? Uh, how many people have you pulled over to go? I can tell you, you drank a pomegranate martini. Who? Uh, th th that's that's an asinine question to ask anybody in law enforcement. But beer, tequila, what? Like you, you know the different smells of alcohol. Okay, I mean, how many do you have people have you locked up? It hasn't been many because I'm a new trooper. But I, I can, I know beer. I know tequila. I was in the Marines. We used to throw up tequila, and I could smell it when we were running. Okay, but when you when you would pull somebody over, would you say how much tequila have you had tonight? How much beer have you had? You ask, how much alcohol have you had to drink? That's what we've been trained to say. We smell alcohol or beverage, but in the back of our minds, I know what beer smells like. Alcohol or beverage is an alcohol or beverage, okay? It, it is what it is, all right? I just find, I mean, the, the key of the matter here is, is we've established you drink within a short period of time of reporting to duty, right? We've established that you wasn't untruthful, but you have been truthful uh, after we confronted you about it. But the only thing is, is why you had the PBT out. That's the only thing that we hadn't cleared up. Yes, sir. So, I'm going to give you one more opportunity. Why'd you have it out? It wouldn't have charged it. Let's face it. No, I already told you. It wasn't to charge it. It, it. You you may have got it out to check yourself to blow with it, and then once it was dead, you were like, all right, I'm going to charge it just so I can check myself later. But, why but you didn't have the opportunity. No, no, no. We're asking the question. So, oh, yes, sir. Well, you don't answer the question with a question. You see what I'm saying? You got it out to check yourself, and it, it was you found out it was dead, so you put it there to charge it to check yourself later. Correct? No, sir. When would you ever use a PBT? This is Atlanta. I, I, okay. I've been when's, driving. When's the last time you worked a wreck? It's been a while. Oh, last year. Last year. So, how many wrecks have you drove around in that patrol car? It's been several. A bunch. Because at the, so, so let's I face it. You, you, you don't need it because if you were working wrecks on a daily basis or you were locking up one drunk a, a week, I might can understand that. Okay, but even I wanted to keep all of my issue gear working because I for when's the last time you checked it? Check the PBT for that night. When was the last time you checked it? What do you mean before that night? Yeah, probably several months ago. Probably two, two, three months ago. So the night that you come to work from drinking, 
Is the night you say, I'm going to check it to see if it's working? It's a bad coincidence. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. So you you got it out with the intentions of checking yourself? No, sir. I would have done that at home. I would have called out sick. I would not do that at work. Well, when have you ever charged it at the mansion? Let me ask you that. I've only been at the mansion for less than a month. I've never charged it at the mansion. I don't have a charger for it at my house, and there's a charger for it at the mansion. What's it, how's it charged? With the little, the old droid charger, the micro USB, not the USB-C. And there's one of those at the mansion. I had it plugged up right there. Does it there. not come with one? Sir? Does it not come with one? I don't know where that stuff is. I mean, they gave us all that stuff right out of trooper school. Right? So you've lost EPS equipment, is what you tell me. The charger, I'm sure the box with the charger in it is probably in Valdosta. Awesome. But I've wrecked my car. I've got, I've had gear missing go out of my patrol car. Like was, what? And when I got in my wreck in August, almost everything was stolen out of my car while it was at headquarters. My body armor, my magazines, all kinds of stuff. So I think it was probably turned in? No, sir. They had to reissue me my gear. Who stole it? It's probably some other troopers. So, so you're legend some other troopers stole your equipment? My, my, my wreck patrol car was at headquarters after my accident Friday, August 13th. I noticed I was out for two months. I noticed shortly after I came back to work, hey, I don't have body armor. And I told my supervisor, they just told me to go to headquarters and get some more. And I went to headquarters and they just issued me more gear. All right. Well, I'm not going to see you on the I mean, the easiest way to solve it is to put you on polygraph. Yes, sir. And, and, and my, before I end this, I'm going to clarify that you got the PBT out to charge it, not to test yourself. That's correct. Hmm. And, you, and you're going to go down with that because there's I've come clean about everything else I, if, I, if I don't have a reason to lie I'm not gonna lie there I have nothing to lose here right now I, I've, I've come clean about everything else okay. you got anything? sure you want to go down this path? Uh, no I'm, I'm I haven't lied. yes or no? yes sir yes sir I do All right. um, what you think about something You've been given every opportunity to fix this. Do you agree with that? Yes, sir. Been given every opportunity to clarify some things. Yes, sir. You understand there's some things that aren't clarified right now. Yes, sir. Who do you think could fix that? Hmm. I'll give you a hint. Now would be the time. I've, I've come clean about everything that we I've have some unclarified yes, issues, sir. right? And you're the only one that can fix it. Yes, sir. Man up. Every, everything's in. Uh, is everything's already out in there, sir? I've come. No, clean it's not. Day. It's not. Just like Frisco's wasn't out there when you swore that you yes, laid sir. around the house all day. And y'all call me out on that. I was truthful. I'm calling I'm you. Came, I'm calling you out on the PBT. On something else now, and I'm, I'm, I'm being truthful. I have no reason to lie. None. Y'all have already caught me in other lies, and I came truthful about that. Y'all checked me on this. My story is the same on this because I'm not lying about this. I don't. Making it the same don't don't make it truthful. Yes, well, what you're saying is, is you got your PBT out to charge it. You didn't get your PBT out with any intentions of testing yourself. No sir. I noticed it was dead. I brought it in to. to you happened to notice it was dead on the night that you yes. go out drinking before you come to work. I said earlier, back what other was... equipment did you have to check on? Well, they got my state cell phone back. Yeah, we talked about that. What other equipment? I really don't have much else to check. So there was no other equipment that that you have that, that, was that just, has to be checked. It was checked. laying over there in the seat. That I just grabbed it. And it's like push the button. I mean, we already talked about that, but I don't. I don't know if my aim point battery is in my rifle. I, 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 I check it as I as I see it, or as I like. Maybe if I would have took my aim point to my lost, I would have checked on the battery. So in order to check the PVT, you have to blow in it. Well, it clicked off when I blew in it. But in order to check to see if it's if it's working, you have to blow it. I would think so, yes, sir. You've been trained how to use one. Yes, sir. Is that how they trained you? Make sure it's working right. You got to blow it. I mean, it would register no, no, no. something. Hang on. Did they train you to use your PBT 
by blowing in it yourself, make sure it's working correctly. I don't recall. I so don't. how did they train you to test your PBT? As far as I can remember, it's just... As far as I can remember, it seems like they just said make sure it works. Don't how do they do? How do you how do you make sure it works? I would say by blowing it. What kind of PBT you got? I don't know. There's different kinds. It has a yellow case around it, button on the front, button on the back, and the screen with the straws. So what I'm getting at, by turning it on, that doesn't ensure that it's working. I didn't believe that it did because it still showed that it had a battery and I was like I haven't used this thing in forever I haven't I just found the thing like laying in the seat over there that's what gets me you hadn't used it in forever and all of a sudden on February 24th when you admitted you had dreams a short period of time before coming to work that I, I need to check it but did, did your FTO teach you to test it that way by blowing it make sure it works they never really told us how to test it. They just said, make sure it works. Uh, but Don't you, ever need it and then not be working. That's what we've always been told. So so what you're trying to say is, is you haven't been trained properly. Is that what you're trying to say? I guess you could say that. No. How do you check it to make sure it did works? Did you graduate through school? I did graduate through then, school. Then you, do you been trained properly? So how do you check it to make sure it have works? Have you ever used it on a suspect? I have. And what did you do? Turned it on, it said blow, they blew in it, it registered numbers. Wait a minute. Did you blow into it first to make sure that it was working? No, sir. Why? Because according to you, because that's I was, your training. Because I was checking a suspect. But you didn't have to blow into it. No, no. Before no. he did, before the suspect did. No, sir. So, it's fair to say, you don't have to blow in the PBT yourself to make sure it's working right. Because you've never done that before in a real life situation, is that right? That's right. You can say that's right. No, I'm not going to. No, it's either yes, yes or no. So you blew into it the night of when you were at the mansion. For what reason? Because I didn't believe that the battery still had a charge. Even though it was lit up? And it cut off. So had that been a suspect and it cut off, I would have still gotten in trouble for my gear not working because I, it hadn't been checked properly because I had the battery dead. Whose fault would that have been? Mine. My gear is my responsibility. It's supposed to always be in good working order. I don't believe you. I'm not trying to get fighting words with you. I'm not trying to get ugly with you, but man to man, I don't believe you. And I wish you would man up and be honest, like a trooper's supposed to do. That's what I wish you would do. Yes, but what I want really doesn't matter. Because if you want to go down this path, you are on your own. Yes, sir. All right. So let's, let's, let's be safe to say that you lied to supervisors when they were questioning you about the incident. Correct. Yes, sir. All right. And what does policy say? You have to be, you require to be what? Truthful. Truthful. All right. It's safe to say that at the beginning of this interview, you wasn't truthful. Correct. Yes, um, and, and you were truthful about having drinks prior to going to work. Right, yes, sir. and it's safe to say that you had roughly two to three drinks. Two. Two, two and a half, I mean. Two drinks. Two drinks before you came to work. What's the last one being between five and six? Yes, sir. Well, it, no, it, it ended before. Yes, sir, you can, you can tell that. I don't put words in your mouth. I'm, yes, just, I'm just asking. This was the last one you had was. Yes, sir. It was technically five, between five and six, because I. All right. Before we gain that? No. This is still under investigation, so I'm giving you a direct order. Don't discuss this with anybody. Don't send any text messages um, with anybody concerning this, okay? That's a, that's a very direct, what's called a gag order. All right, so I don't, don't be texting nobody about what you, we, you were asking here, nothing like that. Clear? Yes, sir. You think, you think you'd like to add? Um, did the breathalyzer results come back? I have no idea. That's an HR issue, that's not our issue. Okay. All right. All right, the time now is 12, 19 p.m., and that concludes this interview.